Should maternity pay be increased? Kemi Badenoch has been criticised after suggesting that statutory maternity pay is too high. This is the MP speaking on Times Radio. Statutory maternity pay, it is a function of tax. Tax comes from people who are working. We're taking from one group of people and giving to another. This, in my view, is excessive. Now, Ms Badenoch has since said that she was misrepresented, but her comments have triggered a debate over the UK's maternity system and whether mothers are receiving enough. Statutory maternity has two parts. So, in the first six weeks of leave, mothers are legally entitled to 90% of their average weekly earnings. After that, they can only get a maximum of £172 per week. Now, the employer pays this, but they can then claim back the majority of it from the government. And last year, the government spent £2.8 billion on maternity leave. Should they be spending more, Angela? Well, if they had it, yes, they should. But the problem is that, uh, as we know, the, 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 the uh, demands on the, uh, on the public purse are huge. The thing about maternity pay is we have to have it, OK? People have to be able to survive if they want to have babies. And if people don't have babies, then the human race won't survive. So, and, it, and it's very difficult for people to manage on one income. And a lot of women find that they're rushing back to work, even though they're maybe not ready to. And it's an entirely personal choice whether you go back to work or not, simply because they don't have uh, the wherewithal, the financial wherewithal to, to stay it off. So, you know, ideally, yes, but I think it's understandable that it has stayed roughly where it is. We are amongst the lowest of the, the OECD uh, countries in Europe and I, I would like in an ideal world for it to, to be raised. Um, I think we need to now see the fact that also it's, e it's slightly easier to work with babies than it was in my day. <laughs> a bit of a history lesson yep, for yep. you. Yeah, okay. So when I used to get my quill out to return or <laughs> chisel the tablets as I returned to, to writing pieces for my newspaper, it was all or nothing. I had to go back to the office, okay? So that meant nursery fees, which were huge. And, you know, you spent, spent you felt at times you were paying for somebody to stay at home with a baby who would sleep for three hours in the afternoon. And, and that was quite difficult. Whereas now, flexible working, some working from home. I don't agree with all of it. Um, so it is marginally easier for certain jobs, obviously not if you're a plumber or a brain surgeon, you mm. have to be where you are, um, to do it. Um, but it is a very important thing. I did I know she's rowed back on it, but what Kemi Badenoch did say suggested that um, the money's got to come from somewhere to pay this. You could say this about sick pay. You could say it about yeah, so many I mean, different it's, benefits. It's, this is like the whole yeah. of government. I mean, yeah, that's what we do. What is the government curse. there for? Yeah. I do wonder, though, if it stays at the level it stays at with the cost of living crisis and all the other pressures, particularly on, let's say, the middle classes, does this mean that we're only going to get the uber wealthy having children, uh, women from the uber wealthy yep. parts of the community, and also those that are struggling, that, that may be on the very benefits rich are the already. Very, very poor. Yeah, and is that what we're looking to achieve? It's not what we're looking to achieve, but it's what we're achieving, because if you look at the, uh, the, the average birth rate in the UK, it's, it's not as bad as, as Italy, for example, mm -hmm. or Russia, or, or, or South Korea, but it's, it's, it's going down, it's about 1.5. I remember the days when it was 2.2 and 2.4. Wow. You know, you probably come from a family uh, where there were like four or five children, I do. So, I mean, yeah, to my three, my parents, actually. Yeah, you see what I mean? But I've had four, You've had four, yeah. But in the case of uh, Kemi Badenoch herself... Yeah. <laughs> OK. <laughs> in the case of Kemi Badenoch herself, I mean, her husband is a, a pretty wealthy banker with Deutsche Bank, so she didn't necessarily have to worry about this. In fact, I think, according to Michael Ashcroft's biography of her, she resigned her yes, job at The did. Spectator after rather than taking maternity yeah. leave. After number and two. A, exactly. And a significant percentage of women uh, do not take up their full entitlement because, OK, 90% for the first six weeks sounds great, but then it drops to £172 a week, I think we saw mm -hmm. on that graphic, and that compares very badly with the likes of Sweden and Norway. So you can see why uh, some people say it should be increased, perhaps to the um, minimum wage, at least. Yeah, I mean, it's below the minimum wage. Is yeah. that right, Angela? No, it, it isn't, and we do have to... It's a very difficult issue because, because um, it, there's no... I think... I mean, I'm not a massive fence-sitter because you just get... A, a sore splinters. bottom, as you know. Mm. Yeah, exactly, splinters. Um, but, the, but the fact is that um, we need to incentivise women to go back to work if that's what they want. But equally, we don't want women to feel compelled to leave their babies if they don't want to. So do you go back because you simply can't afford to stay off? Or are you going back because you feel that it, that's the thing to do? I mean, there were, there were lots of women, lots of my contemporaries, when I was having um, children back in the dark ages, we went to... We, but it, it, the thing was, 
all, all sort of jokes aside, none of you have denied that point, by the way. <laughs> I do laugh. We're, we're, yeah. we're, we're, just trying to, we're just trying to work with you, Andy. You could have driven a bus through that silence, I'm oh, sorry, God. as they say around my way. Okay. No, but a lot of us went back to work to pay for the childcare yep. because we wanted to keep a foot in the door. We wanted to keep a sound mind, and that's no disrespect to women that choose to stay at home. It's very fulfilling if that's what you want. But you found that there were, that, you know, there was thin gruel left afterwards, yeah. but that's how it was. It was ever done. But there is a difference, is there not? Um, and please do call us on this, 0207 862 I'm going to get to the, the calls in just a second. There is a difference when you're talking about your generation because childcare is sky high now, yes. I can tell you, and, and unaffordable for most people, I would suggest, which stops women getting back. But there is a difference between going back to work because you want to keep a foot in and having to go back to work because your mortgage still needs paid yeah. and, 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 and households now need two incomes. But the, but, but the critical... Yeah, look, as I say, if the purse could... If the public curse could sustain it and according to this government it can't because they're taking money off pensioners mm. so you know I'm only going by what what their so-called balance sheet says mm. um, yeah, yeah most definitely but but the, the fact is that if um, if you want to go back to work there are when I say easier there are more nuanced ways of doing it now in a way that simply did not exist I remember I worked for um, a newspaper and I was the first person in the office that went part-time mm. um, in that newspaper it was a it was a regional newspaper and it was like a big deal going from five days to three days whereas now because of technology of I could have worked from home done more hours accrued more more kind mm. of work if you like so things the landscape the technical yeah. landscape has changed we as talk well. about the cost of doing this 2.8 billion pounds but remember there are hidden costs to not doing so in terms of the family, in the support, Labor children market. starting life. Yeah. These are the kinds of things that we don't see because we can't measure them, but it is very important. But part of Ke what Kemi Badenoch has been saying is that we need to take more self-responsibility and, and maybe she has a point in that. I would love to hear it from the viewers. Lauren from Kent, you're up first. What do you think about uh, Kemi Badenoch's comments? Hello. I mean, I feel really infuriated by them and let down as a woman, uh, like women should be supporting one another. And I don't think that was very supportive in what she said. Um, not increasing maternity pay makes you more reliant on your partners. It's asking your husband for money throughout the time that you're on mat leave. And it's not a nice position to be in. And realistically, the money you do get on maternity statutory pay isn't enough to survive on anyway. Um, and things have changed. I mean, you, we have to go back to work because you have to have a two salary income now. It, most couples absolutely do, yes, Lauren, and that's why a lot of women have to go back. But we do want women back in the workplace. So actually, perhaps that kind of works for us. Well, yeah, we do want women in the place, absolutely. But also, children are going into childcare a lot younger, mm. and we need to uh, have them that time with your children and raise them. And they're important years, and not having that option, because it isn't an option if the, the money support isn't there. Uh, Lauren, and you bring up a really good point just about the having to ask your partner for money, which is probably awkward in most cases, but it can be particularly bad if you're in a relationship that, that may be abusive, even just financially abusive. Lauren, thank you very much for your call and bringing that to our attention. Now, the former Conservative MP Miriam Cates has been tweeting about this issue, writing on X. She says that Ms Badenoch has been misrepresented and she wrote, statutory maternity pay is indeed paid by the taxpayer, including many taxpayers who will never claim maternity pay themselves it's perfectly reasonable to question whether this is fair uh, so we have a choice reprivatize uh, the cost of old age or we accept that we must also socialize the cost of having kids uh, Miriam joins us now live from the Conservative Party conference Miriam what do you mean by that um, good afternoon. Good morning. We're still morning. Um, yeah, so what I mean is that we have socialised the cost of old age. So whether or not you have children, whether or not you pay sufficient tax during your life, you will get a state pension, you will get free health care, you will, in a lot of circumstances, get free social care. So the average pensioner now, I think, takes out, if you like, about £200,000 from the system more than they put in. So they get up how much more they're getting in benefits than they paid during their working life. And we fund that through the taxes of people that are working today. So young people, they're paying in their taxes for the pensions and healthcare of old people. And actually half of our welfare bill now as a country is on the pension. So if we accept that, that that's what we want to do, that we're going to socialise across age, of old age, whether or not you've saved 
whether or not you've had children yourself, you will get that benefit, then it is completely unfair and unworkable to say that the cost of having children must be borne completely privately. Because then we've totally broken the link between having children and providing for our future. Because you can say, well, I'm not going to have children. It's too expensive. I can't afford it. There's not enough help from the state. I can't live on, on one income alone. So I'm not going to have children. And then what happens is, a few years down the line, we just don't have enough people paying taxes to support pensions and healthcare. So we desperately need people to have children for our future. And they won't do that if they can't afford to, because so much of their income is going on to support people in old age. So either we scrap our socialist old age system, which I don't think would be very popular at all, or we have to accept that the taxpayer must also support people who have children through maternity pay, through maternity leave, all those other benefits. Miriam, you make a very, very powerful point, but against Kemi Badenoch, I think, I thought. Yeah. I mean, you seem to be saying that what Kemi Badenoch was arguing for is absolutely wrong, because she says she wants the government to get out of business, get out of regulation, and stop putting the pressure on the taxpayer. But you're kind of saying, well, if we socialise the pensions, we must also socialise uh, maternity pay. Well, a lot of people agree with you, which is why Kemi no, Badenoch is in the doghouse. Well, but no, because the, the, the problem is, what she said has been completely misrepresented. She was talking about business regulation, and I agree with her. Businesses in this country, particularly small businesses, are massively overregulated. whether that comes to things like VAT thresholds, health and safety legislation. There are clear disincentives now for businesses to grow and expand and take people on. That is a very valid point, and I agree with her. Unfortunately, she was kind of, the conversation was hijacked by, by a question about the pay, which she didn't perhaps answer in the most articulate way possible because she was talking about something else. But she has since made clear she absolutely supports uh, maternity pay, the principle of it, and that actually she was talking about regulations which was something entirely different. Okay. But nevertheless, if it leads to a conversation about maternity pay, then let's have that conversation. Well, which we are having now, but just to make clear, when we've seen the clip of Kimmy Bednock, she starts it by saying maternity pay. So she did at that point know she was talking about maternity pay. And what she said is that it's, it's basically taxpayers' money. It's taken from one group of people to give to another. And as you said in your tweet, not everybody will receive maternity pay. Yeah. Uh, just let me take another call. But, but the really and then... important follow-on from that Oh, sorry, the really was... important follow-on from that is, is that that's fine as long as you're willing to accept that pensions stay free, uh, that healthcare stays free, you have to accept that you'll then pay this, uh, such a maternity pay. But it's still true that it's funded by the taxpayer. But her words have been completely misconstrued, and I think it's quite dishonourable, given that she very quickly said, no, that's not what I mean. I support maternity pay. I was talking about something different. OK, let me take a call and we're going to get back to you. Susan from Lincolnshire, what's your thoughts when it comes to maternity pay? Is it enough? Does it need to be increased or reduced? Well, all I can say is back in when I had my child, I forget what maternity pay was, but next to nothing. But I do think that we have to be very careful on... And it sounds awful, and a lot of people would disagree. How many children people have? I decided, because I was carrying twins, I lost one, I kept one, I am not going to risk, and it was only tiny, we had the hospitals and everything else, I decided I was not going to risk anything else. Now, I think it, we do need to help people more yes. to understand about child having children and, and why do they want the children and how much i'm not talking about contraceptive and how much they cost okay. and because i'm now in my 70s please 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 can they be a help for these well i call them youngsters but they're not in society please okay susan thank you very much for your call uh, just